One sec. Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Living in Calgary. Wow, I'm your host, Brian Howard. And today I have the good fortune of introducing you and having a chat, sharing with you the life, Calgary Living, with Oliver Froome from our, our kind of partnering uh, company, OTBX Air. Welcome to the show, Oliver. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you guys having me on and uh, I'm looking forward to this. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming in, Oliver. We've had fun ever since, uh, you know, first getting to know you. I think you approached us, you know, probably almost a year ago or so about, you know, using us, uh, using yourselves sort of new to Calgary about a year ago in, in the photography business. And uh, it's been kind of a fun meeting and interaction ever since. Oliver, to get started, though, you're, you're in Calgary not a long time, say, compared to me or a born and bred Calgarian who's as old as both of us. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. Cal Oliver, you've been here just about a year. What strikes yeah. you most about Calgary and how did you come to Calgary? So a brief background is uh, before I have came to Calgary, I mean, I've traveled all over Canada, been to every major city. Um, and I knew living in Ontario, I wanted to have a change. And I was working at OTBX Air and I was like, look, we were doing expansions at the time. And I was like, why don't we start expanding out West? I mean, I'd love to go to Calgary. And so that conversation got brought up. And next thing you know, about a year ago, I moved here. Wow, that's very yeah. cool. And why did you want to come to Calgary? You could choose Revelstoke, Vancouver, Victoria, Whistler, I don't know, anywhere, Banff, 10 buck two yeah. free. <laughs> why, why Calgary? Well, I mean, um, based on experiences in different cities, I, I knew there was something special about here. I grew up in the country, and so um, the city's small enough, but large enough that it's an in-between. If I, if I drive 45 minutes, I'm in the mountains. I'm a big outdoors person, so having the opportunity to head to the mountains in about 45 minutes an hour, I can't pass that up. And um, there's no better location to uh, kind of expand our business to. Oh, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. And um, what is it that you love most about Calgary so far? I would probably say um, the mountains and being able to have access to multiple hikes, the skiing, and then the city itself um, with it being still very lively, but I can spend 20 minutes and get right downtown if I want to. Mm, nice. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And what about, is there anything you don't like about Calgary? I remember when I moved to Calgary in 2003, actually, I kind of liked it from the beginning, but maybe not. I didn't fall in love with it immediately. And my wife cried and wanted to go home <laughs> to the coast. But uh, after about a year, she loved it. And I loved yeah. it, of course. Um, is there anything you don't like about Calgary? Not necessarily. Or, or can you remind me about what we might not have liked? Do we have a similar experience or did you just love it? <laughs> I mean, you wanted to come. I, 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 know, I know. I haven't found much uh, that I don't like within Calgary. Um, I mean, besides so, some of the some of the drivers, I find can be a little hectic from turning from all the way from the left lane uh, to an off ramp. But that I was probably that, me. <laughs> <laughs> I brought that point up to someone else, and they were like, "Oh yeah, I did that today." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, that can be frightening." But besides that, no. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, and then, so you've just been here a year and it sort of came in COVID times. Was that odd? I actually met a few people that like sort of moved to our city during COVID. What's that like? I mean, I don't think it's anything different. Uh, I mean, coming from like Southwestern Ontario where things have been fully locked down for like years, almost two years now. Um, moving was, if anything, a little easier. There's less traffic. You just come out here and there are the restrictions out here were a little um, easier than Ontario. That's for sure. So uh, with things being somewhat open, it was actually a breath of fresh air being able to go to maybe a restaurant and sitting, sitting down, whether it's on the patio or inside. <laughs> mm, well, neat. Yeah. Very good. Um, and tell us a little, bit, a little bit about your interest in real estate. Obviously, you're in a lot of homes, a lot of beautiful homes with your, with your business of photography mm -hmm. um, and videography and marketing. Uh, tell us a little bit about your interest in real estate. Have you owned real estate? What's your, what's your process? What's your mojo? 
What's my mojo? So I haven't owned real estate uh, before. I'm in the process of uh, looking at uh, some investment properties and some houses out here. Um, and I've always had like a little bit of an interest in it. I mean, I have a background in finance and, uh, you know, real estate plays a big role in our economy or any economy, to be honest. And um, so getting into something like this and going to see the houses and visiting um, some of the nicest properties I've ever seen. I mean, it's, uh, it's quite astounding. And so it, uh, it sparked my love of real estate and it's only kind of grown, which is nice. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Um, and so, uh, I think recently, um, you're, you're, you're starting in uh, the process of looking, um, mm-hmm. where do you live in Calgary currently? And like, what do you think that you're going to be looking at in terms so, of the next property that maybe your first own, your first property that you would own? Yeah. So right now I'm in the Southwest and I mean, um, we're I'm just renting right now. And when I first was like looking at a property out here, um, I had uh, some contacts that could actually go visit it, send, send photos and videos as they got like a tour for, for me, which was great and helpful. And uh, I actually quite like the Southwest. So I think I'm sticking around this area, maybe the Northwest as well. Um, and then in terms of what I'm looking at, um, maybe... This, excuse me. So where yeah. in the Southwest did you happen to land? Where? Was it in, the Beltline or was it um, Springbank or was it Cedar Bray? <laughs> Was Cedar Bray. Oh, Cedar Bray, I'm <laughs> yeah, guessing. Are you guessing? Because I was going to say, I landed in Cedar Bray. Well, yeah. That's crazy. Well, you should buy our listing in Cedar Bray. <laughs> I'll send it over. Let's take a look. Oh. Interesting. I, you know, I think I might have heard, I, like, I, that yeah. doesn't come out of the blue. There must be something yeah. back there that we've talked about this before. You told me you were in Cedar Bray. I don't know why I said that. That's <laughs> that's funny. Those, like, those, I don't know, maybe 80 Southwest communities, and I picked one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three. That's funny. So well, why Cedar Bray? It was um, a house. It was affordable. It, like, like, why did you not land in the Beltline? You're a young guy. Why weren't you downtown in a condo, high rise or something? I'm not, I, I don't like living right downtown that's not my uh that's not not my mojo yeah not my mojo so being able to be like outside of the city having some um like distance from all the i guess busyness is something that attracts me so i mean like i said i'm still 20 minute drive into the city that's that's more than enough for me um and yeah we after looking at a couple properties out here um this one caught our eyes. So we had a couple of people that were looking to move out here and um, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's where we landed. You landed. Okay, cool. Do you have a garage? We do. We have a two car garage. Nice. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm, just, I'm curious now that you live in Cedar Bray, when you leave that community, haven't been in the city for about a year, yeah. are you going, when you leave your sort of driveway and outside of the community and you're sitting, are you mostly, uh, then you're going, I assume you only go North, like for the most part, for, for probably most I'm part. wrong, but, um, do you head out on the, uh, is it called, um, Titsutina trail or stony yes. trail? So you go, you go West as opposed to yeah. East. And of course, you know, that road didn't really exist uh, like a year ago. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So it's actually been a game changer for us, which is really nice because it like provides great access to uh, to get downtown, to get to a lot of, uh, well, different jobs. And then also is a great access to going out to the mountains and the west. It makes it fantastic. Yeah, Yeah. it's super quick. Yeah, I I moved here at the right time after all all the construction, all the road building. I remember selling properties in Cedar Bay, like, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or even 15 years ago. And yeah. there was a big concern of where that road would eventually land and would be too close if I bought this house here. And I, I just really don't think that's been an issue at all. Cool. No. And, um, and so um, let me ask you a question. Um, uh, well, this is a funny question. Okay. I have it here in front of me. I've never asked this question. Wow, this is a really crazy question. <laughs> Would you rather be invisible or be able to fly? Um, <laughs> Not a trick question. I hardly no, understand. I know, I know. I hardly understand it's, the question, um, but it's on I, my list. I just pulled it out of my folder called the folder is called Podcast Calgary Living. <laughs> I, th- I think flying would be unique. I think it would just grab too many people's attention. It would be more, I think it's more practical. I don't need to be invisible. I like to be in front of, a, I like to be in front of cameras. I like to be seen. So yeah. I mean, flying seems like a, uh, like a more appropriate answer. 
but I'm sure you'd be questioned a lot by people seeing you in the air. <laughs> it would, it, I think it would cause like problems. <laughs> but being invisible would be like, that, I mean, for a guy, like for myself and you and marketing guy, yeah. that would like, geez, we do not want to be invisible, no, do we? No, no, no. <laughs> it's kind of the opposite of what I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On that note, let's ask this next question. Yeah. How are being of service and marketing related? Can you repeat that? How is being of service? Yeah. How is, how is being of service and marketing related? In terms of like, what do you mean of being of service? Being of service, like, like, well, so that's probably our generational difference in terms of me asking the question. Sorry, that's being okay. a service, uh, maybe a Look, being a service, like you know, uh, maybe community minded or yeah. helpful, or yes. like actually, yeah. actually, I, the, the, I see here on my list of questions that uh, the one that I had before that, but I was, uh, oh, I actually would be better to lead in. Tell me what <laughs> being of service meant in your household growing up. Uh, what were some of yeah. your jobs around the house? Dishes, garbage removal, snow removal, grass cutting. Yeah. Like it was uh, well, you just listed all of them, but then it was also <laughs> it was um, being. Um, I would include like being handy in that. So if something breaks, whether I'm helping like my dad fix it or you know learning uh, via YouTube as it was around when I was. I guess at the age of that point. And Interesting. Um, yeah. it was like, great, you can find anything if you want to learn it uh, and then go and do it. And so if you, if we were building a deck, installing a new pool pump, et cetera, it's like, I would learn how to do that. And that would be a being of service. And when I was needed, I would, it, it wasn't, no, really wasn't an option. It was okay. I'm out there doing it. And so since I grew up on the farm, it would also be at my house. It was also like community driven. So it was like, a lot of my neighbors had farms. It's like I would go help out with like hay and doing whatever was needed around the farm with them. Um, as I mean, as you do as a kid. I mean, I wanted to be outside. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Very neat. That's nice. Thank you for sharing. That's really oh. nice. And then, so uh, can you relate that Oliver to um, your business? You're in marketing now, really. I think. Yeah. I think you was in marketing. All your, you know, all aspects of that. Um, how is being of service? and marketing related so i think they're like highly related so mm -hmm. for instance i would consider even doing this pot like you doing this podcast for people who are, are listening it's you know you're informing them and getting them introduced to new people and you're helping them and in a sense you're also marketing yourself and when i first moved to calgary and you know uh prospecting realtors i came across you ryan and and this and the show so it's like you're you're marketing yourself without even marketing and being of service and then um with other aspects of being of service let's say you're doing like charity work we've done plenty of like um like shoots for charities where you know we don't charge or we will sponsor them by giving them a bunch of content and uh we think it's great for them because they can use as marketing and it works in our favor Mm -hmm. for marketing ourselves so i think they go hand in hand and um yeah I, yeah nice thank you thank you that's <laughs> yeah. great um what's your favorite daily or weekend activity around calgary or in um, calgary yeah i would probably say it's either backcountry camping or in the winter skiing um as much as i can get out into the mountains i try and do so um nice. and then yeah very probably nice. be those two awesome. we don't have many I, I used to be a big like canoeer portager but um we lack the lakes around here obviously in ontario we had plenty so it's like i've now just transitioned that into backcountry camping which i love <laughs> and what is backcountry camping i assume you put everything on your back yeah. and walk into the well into the mountains primarily yeah. um so it's camping and with a camp stove and, and your food and sleeping bag and tent yeah yeah, it's like the bare minimum. Um, you toss everything on your back and head out for as many days as you would like or as many days as you possibly can, provided you're not busy. So right. it's, um, and then you head out into the wilderness. Typically, you find a trail or something you want to see and try and make like a two to three day escapade um, into the woods. And I think it's a great way to like clear your mind. And I think it's a very healthy thing to do. Have you uh, taken that time, like while you're out there, to summit some peaks? Are you have you have you done that? Have you been bitten by that bug, like I have? 
I have, I have. I've summited a couple peaks. It's been a, it's been a while since I've been able to get out, but mm. I think I've done um, six different peaks. Nothing uh, too too crazy. That's like overnight, but mm. um, typically day day trips up to a peak. Yeah, nice. And it's that's going to continue. I'm going actually. I'm going to Yoho for a backcountry camping trip this week. I think I'm going to try and do two nights in in the woods. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, yeah. So that would be nice. Good. <laughs> Uh, so actually I'm looking at my watch here and we want to be mindful yeah. of our listeners uh, time. Yes. Oliver, why or why not? Are you staying in Calgary? I will be staying in Calgary. I think, uh, first of all, I love growing the business here. It's something I'm very like passionate about. And then, I mean, there's, it's a much different life, lifestyle than Southern Ontario, which I've had a uh, quite the like experience there. And I think it's time to move on and be here for, who knows how long, mm-hmm. but I'm not going home anytime soon. That's for sure. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about the, your more a little bit about your business, OTBX Air. Um, I know that you're doing photography and you know marketing and media. I know you do drone stuff. Like, what what is it in a nutshell? What's your elevator pitch on OTBX Air? We've enjoyed working with you. Yeah, no, for sure. So uh, obviously, our company's been around for about five years. We are new to Calgary, but everything we've learned comes with us. So. Um, yeah, we do your standard photos, video, um, measurements, and then we have a whole different division of marketing. So when you're creating all this content, um, producing these high, high level videos, it's like, are, are people seeing them? Are they getting out? And are, you know, people actually watching them? And so we did dive into that side of the business. And at the end of the day, we uh, are proud of like, what we stand by, which is like our quality, speed, and our creativity um and that's like that's what i'd say our business is about and we've noticed i've noticed a lot of differences from like moving from the ontario market to here um based on people's needs and it's been an exciting journey for sure that's awesome do you um well on a a final question Mm -hmm. well a couple of final questions um what um well, what's the best way to get people to reach out to you is one question. And then, but maybe I'll ask you prior to that is what advice would you give your younger self? Um, advice for my younger self, I'd say, uh, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Um, it's, it can be difficult sometimes, but when you do it, you'll be thankful in the end because you grow uh, not only professionally, but personally as well. And um, I think that's a very important lesson to learn, especially when you're younger, as you're trying to grow. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. And what about, what's the best way for people to reach out to you, Oliver, maybe um, like through the business or are you on Insta? What are some of the yeah. ways to reach Oliver? Yeah, for and- sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you can reach out to us at OTBX Air uh, Calgary on Instagram. That's uh, a great way to get in touch with us. You can visit our website, which is uh, calgary.otbxair.com. Um, and you can give me a, give me a call or even text me. Um, yeah, 403-536-4069 um, is one way to get in touch with me personally. If you just want to call and chat, that's uh, a great way to reach me. Awesome. Oliver, we will include notes, show notes to all those connections. Finally, Oliver, sure. you've just been giving a billboard to the city. That It's a big billboard. What does it say? a tough question (laughs) it would include a funny picture it needs to it needs to have something that stands out first of all um and you know you see billboards with you know standard writing and stuff and it would have to be something creative and different from everything else you see so i'd have to give that some thought in terms of what the picture would be but uh probably throw like a uh like just call me today, but with something interesting and included in it. Oh, nice. I yeah. like that. Okay. Call me today. And yeah, you know, let me be of service, so, right? So, something outside the box. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah. Oliver, thanks so much for being on the show. We look forward to seeing you again before too long and, um, mm-hmm. and connecting again. Yeah, for sure. I really appreciate it, Brian. And uh, I look forward to uh, being back on. And I'll hit.